<laughs> That's what happens when you uh, have dinner with the tech guys. You, get, you have cool things like that. Thank you, guys. Awesome. That's why I was starting to back. I want to give a little time to, to uh, come on up. Thank you, guys. Um, anyway, yes, I'm Chris Merritt, and I'm, I'm here to talk about um, email subscriber acquisition today uh, in, in the next 10 minutes. And there's been a sea change in the whole practice of email subscriber acquisition over the past, I don't know, three or four years. Um, and I'm going to talk today about the new rules of subscriber acquisition. But first, let's touch upon the old rules. There were two rules in subscriber acquisition in the old days. First, you do not talk about email subscriber acquisition. The second rule was you do not talk about email subscriber acquisition. Now, why was that? If the, primarily, it was because originally email subscriber acquisition was done in ways that, that put your, your database in grave danger. Rent, list rental, list purchase were types of things that marketers tended to want to do because they, they had pressure from management to grow their list. But the ESPs, on the other hand, knew that putting any of this into their database was likely to tank their delivery at best and give them, make, get, get them blocked at some of the biggest ISPs at worst. So, ESPs, see no evil, uh, speak no evil, hear no evil, and marketers, again, it tended to be very, very underground. At conferences like this, it would not even be a subject. And, and yet, um, even last winter, there was a panel on acquisition here at EIS. So it's come out of the closet to a large degree, and it is an acceptable topic, but it's not, it, there are still a lot of rules, new rules that need to be followed if you want to do email acquisition safely and successfully. So I'm going to go, that there's three rules, and I'm going to show you how certain source by following these rules to a T, delivers the highest quality, new to file, free will opt-in email subscribers in the business. So number one, never add a subscriber to your list that you aren't certain wants to be there. Now on the surface of that, it's easy to not say, well, of course, why would we, why would we add someone who doesn't want to be there? If you're using uh, techniques like co-registration, you're breaking that rule. No matter what anybody will tell you, you're breaking that rule. You do not know for certain. They have not inserted their email into anything. They might have checked a box. And you say, well, I don't use CoReg, so I'm not breaking that rule. If you pre-check on your website, on the TNCs, when somebody's purchasing something, if you leave the box pre-checked uh, so they're automatically subscribing to emails after they make that purchase confirmation, you're breaking that rule. The only way you can be 100% certain that somebody wants to be on your list is if you made it very clear what they were doing and made them put their email address actually into a form. And that's what we do. For our clients, we build custom landing pages for each of our clients, and that landing page is incredibly clear as to what it wants you to do. It wants you to join, in this case, a, a newsletter to get 20% off, or you know, give them a little bit of honey to get the email address. But again, it's not in any way, shape, or form hiding what you are doing. It is very clear to that individual, that future customer of yours, that they are signing up for email. Once in our process, once they sign up for email, we put them through a, the most rigorous cleansing process in the industry. We make sure that they're not an existing customer of yours. Why would you want to buy somebody you already had? So if we ping your house file, we ping your suppression list to make sure that they haven't unsubscribed. Interestingly enough, that's, it's a good reactivation technique. Some of our clients say, we don't want to buy email addresses of people who have unsubscribed. Others say, well, they're resubscribing. We'll treat them as a different segment. But again, that's not a can spam violation. They're trying to get back on your list. So um, sometimes, again, our, cli our clients will buy those unsubscribes. Sometimes they won't. Uh, you know, we you know, check against known spam traps, bots, IP fraud, all of that. So, uh, as thorough a cleansing as you can get. So now you're getting subscribers on your list that you know 100% want to be there and that have incredibly, incredibly low risk. There's not, a, there's not a chance that one of them is going to be a spam trap in our process. Rule number two, continuously track and optimize the exact sources of your best new subscribers because eventually your dumb luck's going to run out. If, all you're doing, if, if your strategy is hope that the people who sign up will be good customers, again, that, that will only continue so long. And when I say track the, the sources, I'm not just saying we track, and I'm going to show you in a second how we track and optimize all the sources of the subscribers that we are selling to our customers. But you might, e you, know, you might even consider doing that on your website where you're doing an organic collection of emails. Why wouldn't you? And in fact, many of our clients run those organic th through our platform um, as part of their program just, again, so they can optimize where they're coming from and say, where are we getting our most valuable new subscribers? 
How do we do it? We drive people to that landing page through many, many sources. And actually, I, I had a, a version of this where there were many, many sources on there. It's down the one, not, not just one banner. We, we, we place media on behalf of our clients all over, on blogs, on email newsletters, on, on websites. And all of these tens, hundreds of sources are driving them to that landing page I showed you earlier. Everybody who comes to that landing page, we either drop a cookie if they don't give their email address. We call that a finger, leaving a footprint. Or if they give their email address, now we have a fingerprint. So everybody who comes there, we know specifically where they came from, what they clicked on, what was the last thing they clicked on before they landed on that landing page. And we can use that data. Again, as you see here, we're tracking. This is a look into the platform. Vendors, I blocked out. Uh, medium, we, so we can go vendor, medium, and the specific source. And again, with any vendor and with any vendor and with media, there could be 10 or 20 sources from this vendor and in this type of media. So again, in a, for our biggest clients, it's up to hundreds of sources. This, this page would run, scroll way down. What we do, and I know you can't read it back from there, but what, if, if we want to look at subscriber average order value, again, we get that data for our clients back to the at, actual click source level. And in this case, you see a range of 117 average order value down to zero. And what do we do? At the end of a month, anyone that's at zero, we kick them out. And then we test new sources or buy more of the better sources. So month over month, the quality of those sources are getting better and better through the optimization that we're doing at the plat in the platform. But we also track, and, and clients love this, we tr also track vis visitor average order value. Again, those people who came, didn't give their email address, maybe they're already on your list. Maybe they just didn't want to get email. They came to the landing page, went to the site, and made purchases. And, and I call this lucky strike extra or collateral benefit we don't charge for this. We track it so our clients can see what the total ROI of the program is, but this stuff's all gravy. Anyone who goes to the website, doesn't give their email address, goes to your site, buys something, they're likely to end up on your list anyway, so you've got a new subscriber, but we don't track that. But again, so if you were saying, I want to track the site visits, not to your landing page, but people coming to my home page, those visitors, and what they do, again, perfect tool to do that in combination with tracking the subscribers that we're selling to you. We can also track, we have clients that are just looking there, that they monetize their email list through advertising CPM or their affiliate marketers. All they want, yet, so they're not, there's not a transaction happening at their site, so they're looking at open and click. So another thing we, we optimize on, again, is click rate. And we see dramatically different click rates by source. And so month over month, relentlessly, it's an ongoing thing. We're going in the platform, working with our clients, saying where are the, you know, what's the bottom 20%, get rid of them test new sources, or put more money in the higher sources. So month over month, what you see here, and this is an actual client data, where certain sources, the blue, and that's the cost per click of new, new email from subscribers. I don't have a lot of time, I won't explain how that's all calculated, but basically it's the number of people they buy before one of them clicks. And as you can see, through the relentless optimization, over a four month period from launch to the fourth month in, it went from $14 to $5. That's not because of dumb luck because we were just getting better subscribers. It was because every month we were relentlessly eliminating the sources that provided the least likely clickers to that client. So that's, the, that's an example right there of the optimization. Final rule, focus on adding new subscribers who perform as well or better than your house file. You know, I, I tell clients all the time, why would you want to drag down the performance of your house file by adding people who aren't as good? And they say, well, Chris, how do I know if they're as good or better? Again, that optimization and tracking that we do. Here's another actual client. And again, you can look here, the, the impact of the optimization. This, these are revenue per email. The house file is the eight cents revenue per email over a four month period. And the green is the revenue per email for the certain sort of subscribers. Now your mileage may vary um, in terms, I mean, this, this was phenomenal success in a, in a very short time. But again, you can see by optimizing 11 cents, 19 cents, 21 cents, so we're improving, but we're beating their house file every month. So everybody they were adding to their system that they bought from us were better customers than the ones already there. So you can imagine over time, the performance of their entire house file is gonna be raised. And uh, that's it. Any, uh, do we have time for questions? <laughs> well, thanks. Thanks, I'm, I'm, uh, please come talk to me if you're interested in learning more. Thank you very much.